Greetings fellow travellers and troglodytes. I thought we'd welcome in a new year with a very different type of video. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these and I was thinking to cover every single instance of a, of a Phase 1 Clone Trooper figure ever made. Now bear in mind this is going to exclude the Clone Wars figures because they had a ridiculously uh, massive catalogue of, you know, variations and my personal grievances aside with that whole uh, era, um, it would be incredibly exhaustive. Now, bear in mind the fact that there is a extensive number of Phase 1 variants that are uh, realistic adaptations, so don't expect to be dissatisfied with the content of this video. But uh, bearing, bearing all that in mind, let's get into it with the standard clone troopers and officer counterparts. So first, let's go over every single variant of the standard Phase 1 Clone Trooper, okay? So here is the basic bitch Clone Trooper, the standard Phase 1 Clone Trooper. The example that we're using today is the 2003 Super Articulated Clone Wars Phase, Troop, Phase 1 Clone Trooper mold. This is this has been released many times in Saga Legends lines and in the original Clone Trooper line and in some Entertainment Earth exclusive figure packs which we'll get to eventually. But this is the uh, one of the most uh, quality assured clone trooper figures they are quite durable they are incredibly poseable the articulation is sufficient for whatever nefarious positions you might want this one in for what to you i'm not i'm not kink shaming anyone especially in the star wars universe you know you alien shaggers but um this figure in particular is an, an excellent addition to any army, and you can easily army build it. It is not incredibly expensive at all. It is widely available due to its numerous releases. Let's cover the articulation. Bear in mind before we do, a lot of these, a lot of these figures use the exact same mould, so I will not be going out over them for the sake of time constraints. Okay, so this figure has a ball jointed head, ball jointed shoulder, ball jointed elbow, swivel wrist. A ball jointed torso, swivel hips, a ball jointed knees, and ball jointed ankles. So basically, pretty much every single joint, you know, on the actual human body, is uh, a poseable. So you can really get some decent dioramas going with them. Here is the standard Phase One Clone Trooper from the back. So now I'm going to cover every single prior release and other single, every single variation of standard Phase 1 Clone Troopers. Bear in mind, not every single one of them uses the same 2003 Super Articulated mould, so not every one of them will be as articulated as the previously reviewed clone. So here we have the sneak preview, Attack of the Clones, Power of the Jedi figure. Uh, just basically a statue, what do you expect? Secondly, we have the silver variant of it. Basically, it's the same thing, but it's silver. Then we have every single pre-posed standard phase one. Uh, bear in mind, a lot of them are just re-releases, but uh, a lot of them are just released in various army builder sets. We then have the phase one clone trooper with removable armor and a speeder bike, released in the 2002 Saga Star Wars line. After that, we have the original trilogy collection troop builder sets, released via Entertainment Earth. These contained two variations, one of them standard clean troopers and the other battle damage variants with scorch marks present. So that we have the 2005 evolution set, standard phase one clone trooper which had battle marks present, presumably originating from the battle of Geonosis. Then there is the clone trooper training fatigues with the released in the 30th anniversary collection. Then we have the 30th anniversary collection Hawkback battalion clone trooper figure. There is the Scuba Trooper, released in the Legacy Collection, 2008. Finally, we have the Vintage Collection Phase 1 Standard Clone Trooper. Boy, that was a lot of repetition now, wasn't it? Fucking hell. So now we're going to go over every single officer variation. But before we do, I want to give you a little more of an indication of to so every single one of these uh, individual officers' uh, capacities uh, within the command structure in the actual universe. So firstly we have the sergeants who were in charge of a squad which consisted of nine men and obviously him being the leader of that. Secondly we have the lieutenants who are in command of a platoon which is 36 men. Thirdly we have the captain who is in command of a company which is over a hundred men. 
Finally, we have the clone commander who is in charge of various uh, command structures, which would be anywhere from a regiment to a division to a battalion, which is, you know, over 200 men and over. Now, um, apart from these ones, there are quite a few variations, however not as many as standard Phase 1 clone troopers. Also, the majority of these figure variations do use the 2003 Super Articulated Clone Trooper model, so don't be fucking asking me questions, oh, what is the articulation of these? I will specify when or not, okay? So going over all the Clone Trooper Officer variants prior to the 2003 Super Articulated Clone Trooper mold, we have the 2002 Clone Trooper Captain, we have the 2003 Kneeling Clone Trooper Captain from the uh, Army Builder Battle Sets, the Standing Clone Trooper L Lieutenant from the Army Builder Battle Sets, the Clone Commander with the Thermal Binoculars from the 2003 Battle Sets, and the final one is the kneeling clone trooper sergeant. That's all for the, you know, non-articulated pre-posed clone trooper officer variations. Moving on to later figures, we have the 2005 Evolutions clone trooper commander, and that doubles as a pilot. After that, we have the original trilogy collection entertainment Earth sets with two variations: one being clean clone trooper officers, and the other ones being officers with battle scorching marks, just like the normal standard Phase One troopers released through them. So after that we have the Saga Legends Clone Trooper Officer variations. These were released in the 30th Anniversary Collection and the Legacy Collection. These consisted obviously of the Sergeant, the Lieutenant, the Captain and the Commander, obviously. But these are different to the Entertainment Earth exclusive ones due to the colours being more pronounced and the Officer Dot um, things being uh, more lower on the left breast breastplate. Finally, we have the Saga Collection Clone Trooper Sergeant, which differs from the rest due to the uh, colour markings on the helmet being uh, a bit erroneous. And the last of the Clone Trooper Officer variants, we have the Clone Trooper Lieutenant from the Lost Line, and we have the Black Series, even though I don't like Disney era, Clone Trooper Sergeant, all based on the Vintage Collection mould. Obviously, after the Officer variants, we're going to cover all the pilot variations. Uh, we have a few. Obviously, the ones you're all looking at now all utilise the same mould, and I'll go over the articulation. So all of these three figures, which are the 501st pilot figure released in the Green Yoda packaging collection, the 2005 uh, Evolutions uh, set clone trooper pilot or commander, and the 2008 Evolutions pilot, they all utilise ball jointed heads, ball jointed shoulders, ball jointed elbows, swivel wrists, nothing at the torso, swivel hips, ball jointed knees and ball jointed ankles. They all pretty much look the same at the back, the only difference being, you know, slight decorational details such as, you know, different decals belonging to different clone divisions and legions. They all have really, really ugly chromosome deficient Django Fett clones, obviously. The cloning process is still imperfect. So now let's move on to the uh, other variations and complete the set. So in terms of remaining pilot variations, we have the 2002 Saga series clone trooper pilot, the 2008 Geonosis Assault Clone Trooper Pilots, which utilise the 2003 Super Articulated Clone Trooper Mold and have removable helmets. And lastly, the 2009 Evolutions Clone Series Clone Pilot Series 2 Gunship Pilot. Finally, we have the Black Series Clone Pilot. I'm not a fan of this figure. It has many issues, like many Black Series Clone Trooper figures. So if there's anything we've learnt by now, it's that Hasbro really did produce some really good figures in the past. We haven't got to the best ones yet. And then they started shitting out 5POA. What is that? What the fuck is that? Now we're moving on to the Special Forces variations of all Phase 1 clone troopers. Uh, a quick lore dump. These are Advanced Recon Commandos. Primarily Alpha Class Advanced Recon Commandos. There are only a hundred of these guys, and basically these were programmed to be bigger pricks than standard clone troopers. They essentially are genetically more identical to Django Fett. They're also less docile, more aggressive. They are also genetically enhanced, so they are genetically 
different in many regards to standard clone troopers, whereas uh, standard clone troopers aren't as capable for independent thought. However, they are still genetically different to commandos, as they are not as genetically enhanced, and commandos are only more well trained to be, you know, for infiltration tactics than advanced recon commandos. So let's get into them, starting with Fordo. So here we have Captain Fordo. Now, Captain Fordo is a veteran of the Clone Wars. He had his first appearance in the 2003 Tartakovsky one, where, where he assaulted a separatist battery on Munalisk. He also partook in the uh, evacuation of multiple Jedi from High Pori from the first sighting of General Grievous, and was also seen in the Battle of Coruscant, absolutely fucking manhandling super battle droids. So this guy is pretty much the epitome of what most clone troopers strive to be. Now, Fordo has just got... Uh, Fordo, the actual figure... Utilizes some decent articulation, so he's got a ball jointed head, ball jointed shoulders, ball jointed elbows, swivel wrists, swivel waist, ball jointed uh, swivel hips, ball jointed knees, and ball jointed ankles. So you've pretty much got the full range of articulation minus the torso. I must say that the Fordo and other art trooper figures released in the 30th anniversary collection and later legacy collections are the uh, definitive art troopers they get. I will cover later on the, the earlier art trooper figures, but these are, you know, the nicest looking, aesthetically speaking, art troopers. Here is what Fordo looks like from the back. And there you go, that's Fordo. Also, it's worth noting that on his cami he has also two bl blaster pistol holsters. Next up we have Alpha-17. Now, Alpha-17 is another battle-hardened art trooper. He took in the Battle of Camino, the first Battle of Camino, uh, Battle of Jabim, and other notable engagements. He was also tortured by Sarge Ventress and lived. So, this guy is pretty much on Fordo levels of testosterone. Now, art trooper Alpha-17 was originally going to be in the 2008 Clone Wars series, but he was axed in favour of Rex, who is a poor man's version of Alpha. I'm sorry, he may be the most popular clone trooper, but he's about as interesting as spilled fucking white paint. Now, um, Alpha 17, however, when you also... Another notable thing about him is he instigated the art trooper uh, training programme, which saw um, the majority of clone commanders actually develop personalities. So if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have clone troopers uh, like Commander Cody and Gree and all of these, because he was able to take his own experiences and try and put his own uh, capabilities for independent thought and reflect that in other... Uh, more advanced uh, in speaking of, the, of combat effectiveness of a clone troopers. This uh, uh, um, art trooper alpha figure was released in the 30th anniversary collection with Obi-Wan Kenobi because it's the Battle of Jabin comic. Here is what alpha looks like from the back. Next up we have the Camino version counterpart. So this is the uh, 2009 Evolutions letter Legacy Collection uh, Clone Commando set version. So this is just the one where he's kind of retired for a while and he's uh, embarking on the Art Trooper training program. Here is what he looks like from the back. The articulation on all these figures is the same. Here we have a unnamed, just standard Clone Trooper Lieutenant that was released in the Order 66 set and later single-carded in the Legacy Collections. Very aesthetically pleasing figure, uh, one of the best art trooper figures to get. Here's what it looks like from the back. Uh, another thing to note, right, in Hasbro being fucking lazy, uh, they reused the same camera as the old art trooper figures that they did. Another art trooper figure that is basically from the Order 66 sets is the just art trooper commander people colloquially name it uh, from the you know order 66 set with Jedi Master Serve and later in single carded in the legacy collections. Here is what this art trooper looks like from the back. We have the 30th anniversary collection Entertainment Earth exclusive to uh, Mandalorian and Republic Elite Forces set Shadow Art Trooper. It's a very nice figure, unfortunately, this is not his 
original gun. Articulation is the same on this one. Here is what this figure looks like from the back. The head sculpts are also as, as on point as the outward appearance. It is the very accurate Tamwara Morrison head with the 1000 yard stare. He looks like he has just seen two clowns copulating. Uh, here are the older Art Trooper figures, so you've got the 2003 just basic bitch Art Trooper from the Clone Wars line. Captain Fordo, or the Art Trooper Commander from the 2003 Clone Wars line. The Hunt for Grievous set from the 2006 Saga collection, which had an updated Fordo and uh, Art Troopers, and the two Art Trooper Gunners. Oh, and you have the Vintage Collection Fordo as well. There you go. Also, it's important to note that the Evolutions Alpha has a different head sculpt. That's not pointless at all. Okay, now we're moving on to the final segment of this video, the Clone Commandos. Now, the one you're looking at is the most notable squad, Delta Squad, obviously. Uh, good things to note about Delta Squad is they are the most successful uh, Commando Squad, basically, in the Republic, because they actually achieved, without failure, all of their predetermined uh, objectives on the Battle of Geonosis, being the, uh, the assassination of Sun Fak, the crippling of a local droid foundry, the infiltration and disability of a core ship. They were also uh, the major catalyst in uh, the revelation of the Trandoshan Separatist Alliance, which was for um, slaving operations in the Wookiee area of Kashyyyk, which then they went on to do advanced reconnaissance on prior to the invasion of Kashyyyk, in which they rescued Tarful. That's from the games, I don't have much knowledge on the novels, but... To be honest, I can't be arsed at this point. So first we'll cover Boss. Now all of these figures uh, have the same articulation. Uh, Delta 3 8, so he has a ball jointed head, swivel shoulders, ball jointed elbows, swivel wrists, a ball jointed torso, swivel hips, and nothing at the knees and the ankles. So you can get them holding a gun, and pretty much that's about it. The way the legs are sculpted, it's not the greatest. They are good to stand up though, and having a good collection. That is what Delta 3-8 looks from the back. Next we have Fixer, Delta 4-0, the Communications and Techno Specialist. Sounds like he's a fucking DJ. Well, the, uh, you know, the hacker. The resident hacker of Delta Squad. Obviously his articulation's the same, but he has the Ranger uh, appearance, if you went from the skins in the Republic Commando game. Here is what he looks like from the back. Here we have uh, Sev, Delta 07, the resident marksman of Delta Squad, and someone who's probably missing a few neural, neural pathways because he's pretty much psychotic. Articulation's the same, just letting you drink in the very nice detail. These are all released in the Saga collection with a special uh, figure pack. Here is what Sev looks like from the back. Uh, finally, for Delta Squad, we have Scorch, the resident demolition uh, expert, and obviously the comic humor if you ever played that game. Yeah, very popular character as well, very popular character. He even got his own single carded release before the actual figure pack came out. Here is what Scorch looks like from the back. Lastly, for Delta Squad figures, you have the two Toys R Us Shadows of the Dark Side exclusive figure pack with the new mold, which has ball jointed knees and ball jointed ankles. And here is Omega Squad. They are just a, another counterpart to the Delta Squad, basically, they're the kind of like second most known commando squad. They're just a bit more obscure and they just re feature in the Karen Travis Republic Commando novels. And one of them Shag the Jedi, believe it or not. Okay, so first off we have Nina Skarata, the uh, commander of Omega Squad. I'm not that uh, knowledgeable on Omega Squad, so articulation is the same. They're just in special operations, uh, night, night operations gear. That is what Nina Skarata looks like from the back. But we have Atin Skarata, a man who was beaten nearly to death by... Waylon Vau, one of the Mandalorian training sergeants with a Mandalorian saber. That's nice. Remember, the clones had a really good life, everyone. That is what Atin Skarata looks like from the back. 
Now we have Corscarata, the replacement for Fiscarata after he suffered brain injuries uh, near the end of the Clone Wars. He is the uh, replacement marksman for Omega Squad. That is what Corscarata looks like from the back. Now we have Darman Scarata, the aforementioned Jedi Shagger. From presumably from his armor configuration, he was the demolition expert uh, for Omega Squad. That is what Darman Scarata looks like from the back. Uh, these figures were released in the 2007 Entertainment Earth exclusive uh, Mandalorians and Republic Elite Forces figure packs. Next up, and last of this same mold, we have the Star Wars Tales comic pack, just standard Clone Commando. It has the same articulation, there's no actual uh, in uh, universe presence of this actual thing, it's just a generic Clone Commando. Here is what the generic Clone Commando looks like from the back. Now we have the newer Commando mold, which this is the progenitor of this figure, Fiscarata from the 2009 Evolutions. Uh, clone Commando uh, pack. Uh, this one has a ball joint, uh, ball jointed knees and ball jointed ankles, so you can actually pose him. However, the weight of the backpack does make it a bit difficult. This actual one actually comes with the detonator seen in Republic Commando. This is what Fiscarata looks like from the back. Alright, that's it guys, uh, that should be all of them, if there's not, if it's not all of them then I'll be fucking damned. Well, it would just mean yet another shitty video that I've shat out onto the internet. Like everyone else on YouTube. So, uh, I thank you all, personally, for 70 plus subscribers, I hope it keeps growing. If we can reach 100, then I know that at least 100 people in the world are weird masochists who love being insulted in the videos that they watch. But until then, I'll catch you in the next one, and I will start uploading more as a New Year's resolution.